You guys, I made that. Can you believe it? Stay tuned to see all of the details on how I brought this thing to life. With the cost of wood these days, I didn't want to spend more than I absolutely needed to on this project. Initially, I wanted to use a 1x8 so it also wouldn't be too heavy, but then I saw the cost of a 2x8 and decided to go that direction instead. It was half the cost, which to me is crazy. You would think it's the opposite. But I picked up three 1x8x10 boards to build the legs of the fireplace. And for the rest of the frame base, I'm gonna use scrap wood from my garage. Now I made my fireplace a little taller than you would typically see because I'm mostly going to use this for staging my DIY projects and the area it's going in has 12 foot ceilings. So I cut my legs at 42 inches tall. After the first cut, I took the piece inside to make sure I liked the height of it and then cut down five more pieces so I have six 42 inch boards. When I need to cut wood that's all the same length, I put my first cut piece directly on top of the next piece that needs cut. Then make sure the end is flush with each other. Hold the boards in place like this while pulling the saw blade down. And then you wanna slide the boards until the top pieces touch the saw blade. Just make sure the ends are still flush and this is where you wanna make the next cut. I promise you this method will turn out much more accurate than individually measuring each piece. Oh my gosh, you guys, I had so many challenges to overcome during this project. This first issue was apparently a precursor to what was to come. I kept blowing the power and couldn't figure out why. Eventually I realized it was because my space heater was plugged into the same circuit and stealing all of the power. I must have tripped this breaker 10 times before I figured that out. Once I finally got all my boards cut, I need to assemble them. I don't wanna see any screws on the outside of my fireplace, so we're going to add pocket holes. I have this Craig jig, which makes it super easy. You can find a Craig jig set at most hardware stores or on Amazon for about $35. I'll link the one I use in my description box. I made three pocket holes on four of the six boards that I cut. So here's what we have so far, and I'm gonna take three boards, two with the pocket holes and one without, and now make the leg. You wanna lay the boards out so the one with no holes is in the center. I'm gonna make a U shape with the two pocket hole boards sitting on top of the non-pocket hole board. And now I'm using these two and a half inch Craig screws to secure them together. I started with my two end screws, that way I knew the edges were square before adding the middle screw. Then repeated that for the second side and made two legs just like this. Next, I need to figure out how wide I want the center opening. So I brought the legs inside and placed them where they're gonna live. Also, I'm sorry the lighting is going to be a little bit wonky and changed throughout this video. I'm filming right in front of my sliding glass doors and this room gets direct afternoon sun. So I tried not to film while the sun was setting in super intense. Okay, so for the next section, I'm using a one by 12 because I already had this on hand and cutting it down to 42 inches. This is gonna be the face right above the legs. And I'm showing you here, I have two pocket holes on each side to attach to the legs. But this was the next obstacle I ran into, and I'll show that in a minute, but I also cut down two more one by 12s at eight inches to wrap around the sides. So I went to attach the sides to the face and realized the screw was coming out through the front of the board. And that's because I didn't have the depth of the pocket hole set correctly. I know you could adjust the Craig jig based on your wood depth, but I honestly didn't feel like figuring all of that out and just wood glued the sides together and added a few brad nails to hold it in place. Next, I'm gonna start adding some detail and make this thing look pretty. Again, I'm using scrap wood I already had. This is a one by six and I'm going to add this to the bottom of the legs as a trim. 
I'll make sure to put all of the measurements in the description box in case you wanna try something similar, but I need to cut the edge of this trim piece at a 45 degree angle. I wanna miter the corners to wrap around the leg. I'm not gonna make you watch me cut every single piece, but for this and most of the trim pieces we add, the front piece will have two 45 degree angles on either side, while the sides have one 45 degree angle and one straight cut to sit against the wall. Now you will notice the inside piece is shorter than the leg. That's because I'm going to add a decorative insert on the inside. I'm gonna use pull wrap for that inside detail. This stuff is a little more expensive, but I have gotten a lot of big projects and even a few smaller projects out of it. And I used up the rest of what I had on this fireplace. This stuff is super easy to cut. All you need is a utility knife or an X-Acto knife to cut between the slats. It cuts just like butter since the backing is paper and a miter box will work to cut down the length. But my handsaw wasn't quite long enough to cut the 45 degree angle we need, and I don't know where my bigger one is, so I used the big saw. So since the pull wrap is so thin, I really can't attach it to the fireplace. So I glued a thin piece of scrap wood to the back of it. This allowed me to have more surface area to glue and brad nail the pull wrap onto the legs. So I added this like baseboard type piece on. Also, sorry about the lighting. This mantle is literally going right in front of my sliding glass doors. So the lighting is gonna keep changing throughout this video based on the time of day. But anyways, I added that on and I don't know why there is this like gap that's like so big right there because the back of this baseboard is flat. So you would think it would literally sit right up against there and be like that. And all I would have to do is caulk that little seam. But for whatever reason, I could not figure out how to get it to sit properly. So instead I had these little shoe pieces that are wide on the bottom, narrow on top, and I can just put those right on top. So it is making it a little bit higher, even more so than maybe I had wanted, but I think it's gonna turn out looking really nice like this and just look a little bit more finished and not have such a large gap to fill in. So that's what I'm gonna do. We are improvising as I go on this project. So many things have not turned out the way I thought they would or the way I envisioned. And I've learned a lot about cutting angles and cutting different pieces for this fireplace, but we're getting there. And then for the top here, so I have these little inserts of my pull wrap that are on the inside portion of the mantle. And on the top, I added this little brace so that this piece can fit nicely and then it has something to rest up against behind it. And then also because this side was kind of bent a little bit, it was folded. So I wanted to make sure that that stays nice and flat and straight. To adhere this piece of pull wrap, I'm using Loctite instead of my wood glue. Now that I'm happy with how the bottom is looking, I need to finish up the second side. So I cut down all of my trim pieces and added them on. This is one project where it's nice that my craft room is right off the garage and I can just walk 10 steps to get to my saw. Now we need to caulk in everything. You can see I cut the smallest bit of the tip off and I cut it at an angle. This will help prevent too much caulk from coming out, plus it will start to spread it for you with that angle. 
Caulk is a DIYer's best friend. This will help hide any imperfections your miter cuts have or fill in any gaps. Me being a perfectionist, I go a little bit crazy with the caulk. Here's a comparison of how the caulk will just elevate your project by making everything look nice and seamless. Next, we need to start working on the top. I want to cover up that seam where the two wood pieces meet and found these decorative trim pieces at Home Depot. They have a ton of different options to match any home style. So I did the same thing here, mitered my corners so it wraps around the sides and glued it in place with my wood glue. Initially, I held the piece on with clamps because I didn't want the little nail holes if I could avoid them, but I did end up going back and adding the nails. Of course, the Loctite didn't do its job and my pull wrap piece fell right off once I removed those clamps, so I scraped the glue off and then went back in with my tight bond glue, which worked much better. Now for the hardest part of this project and the thing that gave me the most trouble. At the top of the mantle, I wanted a decorative trim and picked this beautiful crown molding up from Home Depot. This was the splurge piece since it cost over $7 per linear foot. I was willing to spend that for the look that I wanted. Okay, so this part was really confusing to me. I ended up wasting a lot of this decorative trim piece that I need to add right here. Actually, it goes the other direction that I need to add right here on the mantle. So because of the way that it sits, like this is on the top and then this little piece is on the bottom. So it's like at an angle and there's a gap between the top. So it's not, if it was flat, it would be sitting like this, but it's at an angle. So it's up here like this. and. This was so complicated to cut. I ended up messing up quite a few times, had to go back to Home Depot twice to get more material. And this was by far the most expensive piece on this entire mantle. So I was really disappointed in myself for messing up so many times, but I wanna show you kind of how I finally figured it out. I watched several videos and let me tell you not to be biased or sexist but the men that I watched were just like here's how you do it boom 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 there you go it's done and then I found this one woman I will link her video in the description box below who explained it so thoroughly and so easy for me to understand that I finally got it when I watched her video after I messed up I think two or three times so I'm also going to show you how to get the correct cut where you need it to be mitered over here on the corner so that I can then have it wrap around the edge as well. You want to have your piece resting where it needs to go. And I'm going to kind of draw a reference line. This is not exactly the angle, not correct. I just need to know this is my outside corner, this is my inside corner. So I'm gonna draw a little line so that I know when I go out to my saw, this is the direction that it needs to go in. So now we're at the saw and yes, I have my gloves on, I have my jacket on because it is in the 20s right now and it is freezing. You don't wanna lay it flat like this. You need to have it up at your angle, exactly how this is going to sit on the mantle or the crown molding wherever you are putting something like this. So then, what we need to do is turn our saw to the 45 degrees. So this angle is going to the right. We don't wanna cut yet because then it's going to give us that inside corner here if I were to cut it like this. So what we need to do is flip it upside down. And we're gonna cut it this direction. So you can see my reference line, it is going, this is my inside corner, this is my outside corner. It is still going in the correct direction. And this time it is going to cut the wood 
so that it is going back so I can wrap my piece around. It's going to give me that correct cut that we need, just like this one. There we go. We have our correct angle that we need going backwards. Now I need to do the same thing on the other side. I need to go measure for where we need to make our next cut. And here we go again with the struggles. Mason was helping me add the crown molding on and the dang thing just kept falling on us. I was putting the brad nails on the thinnest part of the wood and they were just going straight through. I had to add them a little bit higher up where, there, where the wood was thicker. I think it looks pretty good. You can see pretty obviously on this side, it doesn't line up. There's a pretty large gap right there. And I don't know how that happened because well. I measured it really well multiple times. So I don't know what happened. I'm going to fill it in. I think, I think I did pretty good for my first time doing something like this. Obviously I'm going to nitpick all of my mistakes, but this side looks pretty, geez, pretty darn good. I need to fill in with some caulk, of course. Caulk fixes everything. Overall, it's starting to look really good. I am loving it so much. All right, let's add some more caulk. Next, we're adding some more detail pieces. I picked up this fluted wood casing that I thought ties into that pull wrap that we added. So we cut the bottom of this to an angle, 45 degree angle at the bottom, just because I already put this trim down already on the bottom here. So in order for it to sit a little bit nicer, a little bit more flush. It's still not going to be perfectly flush right here, but I have that angle going back, back that way. And then we can cut down the top of it so we can see where it needs to go right up here. All right, buddy, you want to measure it? Like boy here. Yep, that one, that line right there. Yep. Next obstacle, here we go. I got these wood rosettes for the top of the casing, but the problem is they're not the same width. I could have just added the rosette right on top of the piece we added to cover the seam, but that wasn't what I wanted. I wanted there to be a space between the seam trim and the fluted casing. So I stood here forever trying to come up with a solution. In the end, I decided to cut a thin piece of the casing off at the bottom with my table saw. That way I can add the casing how I wanted it. There won't be any overhang or gaps where the rosette is, and I can just trim down the bottom piece of the casing and glue it back on. No one will ever know. But thinking back, I guess an easier method would have been to simply cut a notch out of either corner of the casing. This was the only piece I cut spot on the first try. After all of my troubles, I was so excited. This piece is really coming together. Next, I'm adding the top of the mantle and using another scrap 1x12 from my garage. I wish I would have added two 1x12s and made each a little longer for a step look, but I can always go back and do that later on. I also added a top on the inside section, so there isn't a big hole if you look inside from the front. For one of the last details, I'm taking some more of the pull wrap to square off the inside section. It was looking a little flat and not like a true fireplace wood with only one piece. I just used super glue to attach this one. I wasn't sure if anything else would work and this is an immediate hold. You can see how it just gives that added dimension to the project. All right, you guys, if you're still here with me, hit that subscribe button because we are almost done. I took the mantle right out onto my deck and sanded the whole thing down.
Now it's finally time to paint and Sarge was curious, what color did we pick? It's Cracked Pepper by Bear. I wanted the mantle to be black and stand out against that white wall, but I didn't want a deep dark black. I wanted a soft black. As soon as I opened this can, I knew this black wasn't quite going to be dark enough. It wasn't quite right, but I gave it a shot and started painting. I didn't like it. It was too much like a dark gray. So I went back to Home Depot and picked up the color Dark Secret. And I also swapped out the eggshell finish for satin to get that more high-end look. The difference is subtle, but I'm glad I got a slightly deeper black. This color is perfection. All right, you guys, are you ready to see this amazing epic reveal for the most beautiful yet complicated furniture build I have ever taken on? If you want to check out more of the furniture builds that I have done, click on this playlist right here and I'll see you next week.